If you've been curious about the history of the Decepticon we're taking a look at in today's episode after his recent return to toy store shelves, wonder no longer as we dig into the basics on Spinister. The original Spinister toy was released in 1988. This Decepticon helicopter was characterized as an eerie, mysterious loner, a deadly warrior of few words who revealed little of himself to his comrades, so silent and stealthy that other Decepticons thought he had to be secretly equipped with a cloaking device. Spinister was one of the Target Masters, Transformers who came packaged with partner minifigures that transformed into weapons the larger figure could wield. Like all 1988 Target Masters, Spinister had two partners, Singe and Hair Splitter, a pair of aliens from the planet Nebulos. Singe was the playboy son of a wealthy Nebulan family who transformed into a flamethrower, while Hair Splitter was an unpopular, petty-minded efficiency expert from the Department of the Environment who transformed into a laser rifle, and the pair could also combine to form a larger superweapon. Spinister was introduced into the Transformers comic published in the United Kingdom by Marvel as a high-ranking member of the elite Decepticon combat unit, the Mayhem Attack Squad, responsible for selecting and training new squad members for a mission to eliminate the Decepticon traitors Carnivac and Catilla. Believing that his fellow Target Master Needlenose had potential, Spinister chose to overlook Needlenose's bouts of cowardice and cleared him to join the team. But after the Mayhems took out Catilla, Spinister came to regret his decision, as Needlenose's paranoid fear that Carnivac was coming for revenge infuriated the rest of the team. But Needlenose was right, Carnivac did come for the Mayhems, with Spinister being the last of them to fall. Spinister was also concurrently featured in Marvel's American Transformers comic book, as a member of a Decepticon unit led by Thunderwing on a quest to locate the missing Autobot Matrix. As Thunderwing's obsession with the Matrix grew, so too did Spinister's aggravation with his increasingly unstable commander, until finally, when Thunderwing obtained the Matrix and was driven mad by its power, Spinister tried to talk him down and the deranged Thunderwing blasted him. Spinister survived, but the shock of realising what he'd done to one of his own troops briefly snapped Thunderwing out of his madness and gave the Autobots the opening they needed to take him down. With the end of the original toy line, Spinister wouldn't be heard from again for over a decade, and when he did eventually reappear, it was in a very unexpected place. Writer Simon Furman, who had penned Spinister's appearances in both the British and American comics, evidently still harboured some fondness for the character, as in 2003 he had Spinister make a surprise appearance in Dreamwave Productions' Transformers Armada comic book, as an inhabitant of an alternate universe who was consumed along with his entire reality by the monster planet Unicron. Spinister's made a small handful of scattered media appearances since then, cameoing in comic books and popping up in ancillary media like mobile games. But by far his most significant role has been in the world of IDW Publishing's comics. Now, IDW Spinister was a very different character from the original. He was described as the stupidest person in the entire universe by his teammate Misfire. But despite his outward lack of intelligence, he was a savant when it came to surgery, able to perform intricate operations with ease. Spinister was part of a group of misfit Decepticons named the Scavengers, who travelled the galaxy having various wacky adventures, in which Spinister's surgical prowess occasionally proved useful. He devised a way to repair Transformers who had been lobotomized and sold as slaves to vindictive aliens. And when the group took the brain-damaged Dinobot Grimlock into their care, Spinister was able to heal him. In the three decades that followed the release of the original Spinister toy, new figures of the character were limited mostly to small-scale toys and recolors of other characters. The first was a live-action movie version of Spinister, a recolor of the Decepticon helicopter Blackout, released in 2009 as part of the Revenge of the Fallen toy line. 
but with a minifigure in the Creo Building Block series following in 2012, then a recolor of the tiny Autobot Blaze Master in the Transformers Generations line in 2014. The only full-size toys of the character released during this time were exclusives from Fun Publications, the company that ran the official convention BotCon and the Transformers Collectors Club. The first, available at BotCon 2012, was a recolor of the 2010 Autobot Tomahawk, while the second, sold through the club's figure subscription service in 2016, was a recolor of the 2015 Autobot Alpha Bravo. This version of Spinister did come with Singe and Hair Splitter, though the trademark on Hair Splitter's name was unavailable, leading to his being renamed Schroot, in a reference to the similarly petty pencil pushing bureaucrat Dwight Schroot from TV sitcom The Office. This Spinister could merge with his fellow Mayhem Attack Squad members released through the subscription service to form the combiner Thunder Mayhem. Eventually, in 2018, Hasbro ran a poll that gave fans the chance to vote for Spinister to get a truly brand new toy in the War for Cybertron Siege toy line. Sadly, he didn't win. But the new toy still got made anyway, a faithful update of his original figure which hit the shelves in 2019. Siege Spinister came only with ordinary guns, which could combine like his original Target Master partners. But non-combining Siege versions of both Singe and Shroot were also available to buy separate from Spinister, allowing the trio to be reunited once more. Spinister and his partners were definitely some of the most surprising inclusions in the Siege line, but sneaking up on you unexpectedly is what Spinister is all about. And those are the basics on Spinister, a bit less mysterious now, I hope. Sound off in the comments if you give his Siege toy a spin. Like and subscribe for more Transformers history, click the bell to be notified about future episodes, and if you can, please consider supporting the series on Patreon.